The telescoping boom excavator, like the ones that the Great Owl Corporation makes, are true workhorses of public sector operations. Public works departments nearly always have a telescoping boom excavator because they're mobile. They are truck mounted. It's easy to get them out to a site. It's easy to get them back. And of course, they can maintain highway speeds so they can go anywhere within the city or county jurisdictions. The telescoping boom excavators also have an important safety feature. By virtue of the fact the boom telescopes in and out, and is not unlike an articulating boom, which works in this way, they can maintain low overhead clearance because a lot of the work that's done with those excavators is done directly beneath power lines and utility easements. Think about ditch clean out along a city rural or a county road. Think about working close to intersections on some kind of a dig out installation or uh, some kind of a repair. You may very well have power lines in close proximity. You may be directly underneath them. Well, it's critically important to maintain at least 10 feet of overhead clearance. The telescoping boom excavator will allow you to do that because the operator, working with a designated spotter, can work low profile and never raise the bucket up that high or have the articulating boom knuckle come up that high and hit it. It's been a serious cause of accidents and fatalities in the past. So it has a good design safety feature and it's mobile. They're good reliable pieces of equipment and they do a great deal of work for public sector entities. Now one of the more common things that they use the Great Alls for or the, any other telescoping boom excavator is ditch clean out or loading dump trucks. In this video we're going to demonstrate loading dump trucks. Now the positioning is important because since the thing swings 360 degrees you can load from the side, you can load from the rear. Loading from the rear is a good way to do it because it maintains a narrow loading workspace. The machine and the truck can be in one line and you may not have to block off a line of traffic or a lane of traffic because it's simply not needed. Other times you may have to load over the side. We're going to set up the excavator and the dump truck so you can see proper setup and loading procedures in both scenarios in this video. There's a couple of different ways that you can load a, load a dump truck. One is over the side and the, with a the dump truck directly beside you. Uh, never swing the boom over the cab on a dump truck. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're doing or what, what kind of piece of equipment, you never want to put the bucket over the cab of the dump truck. On this particular time, what we're going to do is we're going to load out of the stockpile and we're going to fill the dump truck up. It's the best side looking directly into the back of the dump truck, but there's some times when you'd want to dump back the truck up beside you. So we'll load him here this time from the side with him direct, directly behind us. We'll swing over the side and fill it up. And then later on, we'll load him with him sitting beside us and fill it up, loading it, loading it from the side beside us there. So let's load the dump truck. dump your material in there, you want to ease it out and then you can boom out as you open your bucket and then you can drop it right up at the front. And then as you reposition your bucket, you can come around and be ready when you get here to come in and get it up high.
need just a little more material in the front, what I can do is I can take my buck, ease it down to here, and then open it up and work on filling it up. You want to wash the tar wraps, you don't want to ever take a chance on messing up a tar rack. Be sure that you're high enough to clear the side of the truck when you come across. Looks like one more bucket right about the back and then we'll be there. And we've got a loaded truck. One of the things to do if we're going to leave the if we're going to leave the yard is we want to be sure and make sure we've got any loose material on the tailgate or on the sides. And then because it is loose material, it'll need to be tarred before we go out on the roadway. And there's different ways you can signal because the visibility is not good in your great all cab. It's really a good idea if you work out a set of horn signals with your driver. A uh, simple set that we used to use is one to one short beat to stop, two to back up, three to pull forward, and then one long horn horn honk when you've got him loaded. So we'll go with it from there. And we've got him loaded, so we'll dump this one out and then we'll pull around and load from the side. There's a couple of different ways where it's good to get off and on a grade off. A lot of times if you get it directly off the back, you've got to be careful climbing up and down. Some of the newer ones have actually got steps on the back. They've also got one side that says do not step on. If you consistently get off and on and step on the fenders on the back, sometimes if you're a better sized fellow that they'll begin to give some. It's better to swing around and you can do that off either side because it'll allow you to get to the, get to the steps and you can actually get off and on on the machine with the from there using your three points of contact without crawling up and down off the tires which is not a good thing to do and without having to cradle it also so all right When you're loading a truck with a grade all, the least amount of swing you've got to do with the grade all, the quicker your, your cycles will be and the quicker you can get your trucks coming and going. If you've got a lot of trucks, then the, the cycle time becomes more important and you can get, get them where you can get in and out. Grade all is one of the more efficient ways of loading out of a wrap pile, especially with some of the ones that are harder and they are really tall because you can reach up into the pile and you can pull the top of the pile off or if you're loading with a pneumatic loader or with a, with a track loader of some kind or a skid steer, you end up digging into the pile and you've got a bluff bank there that can cave off and come down on top of your loader. With your grade all, you've got your boom reach and you can reach out there and pull your top down and loosen it to where it's easier to load with it. But the closer you can get your truck to the pile, the less amount you've got to dump. You always want to be sure and never swing across the cab when you're loading. Um, Number one, you could have a hydraulic failure and you could hit the cab. You could just do dry loader operator error and hit the cab. Also, you could have something come out of your boom and drop it on there. So always, always stay away from the cab on a dump truck. Never swing out over the cab of a dump truck. So let's load him.
of the disadvantages to loading out of a grade hall is because you're pulling your material to you. You'll reach a point where you need to come in and you need, you need to take your bucket and push the material back away from the edge of your pile or else you'll keep pulling it toward the machine. So you can take it and push your excess material that you've loosened and it also loosens what you're doing and you can work the edge of your stockpile and push it back toward the toward the main stockpile. And that's especially important when you get down when you get in, when you load two or three trucks in a row then you've got to take time out and push it away from you. Something else to watch out for as you're loading the, loading the trucks when you back into your stockpile both with your grade off and with the dump truck you want to stop before you get to the point that you're going to lose a mud flap. W is one of the quicker machines and it tends to bounce a little more and it's a machine you're not used to it if it gets to bouncing too much. The 3100 is a little bit, that's the great all near great all with the single axle. It also bounces a little more. If you ever get to where it's bouncing something, just take your hands off, the, off your joysticks for a second, let it settle out, take a deep breath and go back to working on what you're doing. The 4100 with the tandem axle under it and the other great alls that that have the dual axles under the back are a lot more stable and a little easier to operate. Uh, Great All is one of the more versatile machines you can use. Now this is too large a topic to cover in a video of this length, but if you would like more information or training, the University of Texas at Arlington LTAP program would be more than happy to help you. Please feel free to call us at the information provided below on the screen.